So next one, okay. uh, hi Dave, it's great to see you doing so well. Thanks for doing this series with the doc. It is deeply interesting to hear from someone who acknowledges both the bodybuilding side of hormone use as well as the clinical side. By the way, Dave is always doing well. Dave lives a good <coughs> life and is always within about you know two percent body fat of uh, <laughs> maybe not that low of stage uh, ready competition, right? I know some good people between you and Aaron Bolzer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you please ask Dr. Rand to compare and contrast Arimidex, Femara, and Aromasin in the context of HRT, meaning consistent use, not just short term cycling? Uh, do they all lower LDL, and how do we deal with this? Thanks again, Casey Dar. Well, Arimidex, which is also, you know, generic is anastrozole, Femara, he notes here the, the generic is letrozole, are both aromatase inhibitors. Aromacin works differently, uh, eczemastain, in that it is what we call a suicide inhibitor. Not worth going into the physiology about that, but they all work fairly similarly in the, in the sense of efficacy to, to lower estrogen. Okay, um, and that's what we're after here. When I was doing my organic chemistry, I actually focused on the uh, the AIs, the aromatase inhibitors, because you know just the interest from the years of you know uh, wanting to know more about this and and, and uh, being involved in it the way I was and still am. Uh, as I understand, as I recall, <laughs> it's been a while. Letrozole was actually invented first as an aromatase inhibitor. The problem with it was. We found that it mildly elevated liver enzymes, but it's much more potent as an aromatase inhibitor than is uh, anastrozole. Oh. So, for example, in comparing for most people, everyone reacts a little differently. You could use two and a half milligrams of letrozole maybe once every four days compared to, in some people, anastrozole one milligram every day or, you know. Is that too much, one day. milligram every day? Well, again, it all depends. How yeah. do you know? It's yeah. too much if it lowers your estradiol, again, which we use as a surrogate marker yeah. for total estrogens, to below 15 or 20 uh, picograms per milliliter. But most people don't get tested, though. They don't. Well, that's that's a problem. I mean, <laughs> why not? Get tested. Find out where you're at. It's, yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's so worth it. It's, it costs much, much less than hiring a general surgeon, and you're going to want a good one. Yeah. I mean, you don't need a plastic surgeon, but then you're talking about tripling, you know, uh, a, a 3500 to $6,000 procedure. Wow. You know, so so it's worth spending, you know, what are we talking about here? Really, a couple hundred dollars to see, okay, I've been doing this, and this is what I do. I mean, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll put you on what I call a prophylactic dose. I choose an astrozole because standard of care says if I get it done with something that has less possibility of a negative side effect that's what I got to use so yeah. that that's standard of care we use a nasazole rather than letrozole um, and and then in 90 days we do a follow-up to see okay are we doing this in the right way in other words is, are we hitting a sweet spot of, of estradiol letrozole is reserved for the cases where somebody's liver is acting differently and, and things that you can do like you know uh, in some cases people that like to have a couple or more glasses of wine a night I'm not here to lecture, but you know that's going to. Um, yeah, who would I be? I'd be a hypocrite to do. But you know what I'm talking about. I mean, there's there's a there's a glass. You know, every once in a while, there's a glass every night, or there's a bottle every night. Yeah. The point being that alcohol can um, can uh, uh, upregulate an enzyme that also uh, will, uh, you know, it, it, meaning aromatase that will that will make testosterone convert into estrogen more often. So maybe you have a guy who's either you know, in, in, in my case, um, you know, I'm, I'm doing uh, bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. Maybe he's doing a little something on the side that he's not being quite honest with me about. Or even if he is, I mean, it's my obligation to protect him. If he's telling me, look, I'm doing, you know, 600 milligrams a week of tests and what da, da, da. Okay, to use the alcohol example, if you're an alcoholic and you're drinking, you know, a handle every night, am I supposed to say, well... I can't help you with your liver because you're not supposed to be doing that. <laughs> I have to treat these people. So every once in a while, uh, and I 
I say I have to. I I I, I you want it's my job. I want to help people, right? So, <laughs> yeah. but to, so you got to give them letrozol because the inositol one milligram every day isn't helping. Isn't helping. And even you know I've tried two milligrams every day and it just it doesn't work. Wow. So then we switch to letrozol and it's more powerful. And yeah, there's a mild increase in liver enzymes sometimes, but in my experience, no more than say if someone had a Tylenol the night before. Or a couple of cold beers. Oh wow! You know, so I, I don't I don't see that big a difference. But again, we erred on the side of well, this does a uh, function well enough, yeah. so we choose an astrozol before electrozol. Yeah. And and again, without going into too much physiology, aromasin does it uh, differently, but with similar effects. So in answer to his question, um, for consistent use, I would I would choose either an astrozol or aromasin. Honestly, because of, of the way it works with fewest side effects, as long as it does do its job. And then do they all lower uh, LDL? I, I think he means that they all lower HDL. And it's not really uh, the effect of the drug itself directly lowering HDL, the so-called good cholesterol. And don't get me started on the cholesterol thing, but uh, what happens is... Um, Typically, actually, you might see a little bit of an elevation in the LDL, but you almost invariably see a little dip or more in the HDL because estrogen tends to promote better HDL, higher levels of HDL. So it's not a direct, well, it is, it's an ar arguably is a direct effect of the drug, not physiologically directly, but it's because that lowering estrogen will tend to lower your HDL. And that sometimes you can see you know, if we correct it, you'll, you'll see on the report, okay, less than six uh, picograms per milliliter of estradiol. Oh, look, we dropped your HDL by eight points. Hmm, let's do what we're supposed to do, find that sweet spot of estradiol, and then, you know, we find it on the next report. What do you know? His HDL has come back to what it was beforehand. Yeah. Okay. Um, so get tested. That could be a good take-home message. Uh, don't guess when you can test. Right? <laughs> Thank you, Doc.